Good evening. An influential group of MPs has criticised the appointment and subsequent resignation of Kent's first youth crime commissioner, branding it a fiasco. Paris Brown, appointed by Anne Barnes, had to stand down after offensive remarks she'd posted on a social media site came to light. Well, the case has now been highlighted in a report by the Home Affairs Select Committee, which is calling for stronger scrutiny of the country's new police and crime commissioners to avoid what it calls maverick decision making. Our political reporter Ellie Price reports. I don't want people judging me based on a few stupid things that I wrote which I didn't mean. Tears from Britain's first youth police and crime commissioner whose career was over before it had even begun. A series of offensive Twitter comments made by 17-year-old Paris Brown led to her being questioned by the police force she was meant to be working for. No charges were brought, but in a report today, MPs called it a fiasco. Well, that's the conclusion of our committee, and uh, yeah, we support new ideas from police and crime commissioners, but if you're appointing a 17-year-old to such a high-profile media position, and particularly if you're employing a, an advisor who styles themselves as a social media expert of over 70,000 a year, you'd expect the, most, the, the sort of basic check of looking at the online presence to be done, and uh, unfortunately that wasn't the case. The Home Affairs Select Committee report looked at all police and crime commissioners across the UK, claiming there needed to be more scrutiny to prevent maverick decision-making. It highlighted Kent as one of the areas where the budget had increased compared to that of the old police authority. It also criticised controversial personal and political appointments, including Paris Brown. But Anne Barnes today accused the committee of publishing inaccurate information. Every police and crime commissioner in the land is actually doing their best to do their, the right thing for their constituents. And the criticism from every quarter, it is relentless on every police and crime com commissioner. We, would, we could do actually with a little bit of support because we're all really trying to do a good job. The idea behind the PCC post was to reduce bureaucracy and make policing more accountable. But when elections took place last November, around just 16% of people in the South East voted. Let's face it, when there are not enough people interested in an election, you can get some fairly eccentric candidates. And we have seen elected to these very important jobs people who have no experience of political leadership. Like many of her colleagues across the country, Anne Barnes says it's the public, not MPs, she's accountable to. And the real test will come in three years, at election time. Ellie Price reporting there. Well, she's outside the police station in Tunbridge Wells for us now. And, um, Ellie, it's not just the police commissioner in Kent who's coming for criticism, is it? No, that's right. Uh, the commissioner in Surrey, Kevin Hurley, was mentioned. He's got a uh, salary of £70,000 a year and also holds other jobs. In Sussex, the budget has gone up, albeit by less than 1%, as in Kent. And the commissioner there, Katie Bormers, uh, you may remember, criticised at the time for appointing a deputy who her scrutiny panel had decided not to recommend for the post. The report today is a preliminary report to a post that is, of course, a new one. The whole point behind the police committee a police and crime commissioner was to make policing more local and more accountable. The commissioners argue that that's exactly the point. They should have control of their, uh, their budgets and they should also control uh, their appointments. The committee today simply says that because they hold such powers, they should, uh, they should be in a position to come under the same scrutiny as people like MPs. Ellie, thank you very much.